But I do start with land rights and the humanity of Native people and how do you protect that. And so it's not a theme. You know, if you don't go out there and, and live with the community, well then someday you won't have anything to paint about. I think you've got to be somewhere near the natural world to have information and the inspiration and the spirituality that, that you need to make art. And that's where I get to the words, paintings, shapes that I make. Uh, those all came from the land out by Gary, Oklahoma. So we have a very flat kind of reality from the sun, rise, sunset, storms coming and whatnot. That flatness is what I come out of traditionally. The imagery comes from the land, sort of these tree shapes or bird shapes or uh, someone call it feather shapes or cloud shapes. I, I work with what I had and, I, and my grandmother probably raised me in my life so she was very strong to give me those visual kind of clues to be more politicized. And the ghost prints are very important and that's what is a technical phrase from having a plate. You can have all kinds of plates to make prints with. So then you paint and you ink it up and you pull a print or you put, lift up one sheet of paper after putting it through the press. That's called the primary print. You put another, another piece of paper on it, put it back through the press. That's called a ghost. The primary print represent who we are as Native people. Bright, vibrant, strong, clear. You think we're like the ghosts. You think we're gone, you think we're absent, we, you think we're hard to ever see, you know, and, and but we're really like the bright primary prints is what we're like. And so, but I put them together as this absence and this presence together. And that's what I do with all my work. I ghost everything I make now. And I use the ghost as a kind of political stance. As an elder artist, you know, you're lucky and you're, you're kind of uh, gifted if you can generate your own visual form and then it follows you or you follow it. For me, it's all about the contrast and it's almost like a, a kind of a human kind of metaphor and we're different people, you know, and we contrast each other, but we're sitting in this room together. And so that's how my shapes metaphorically live. There is repetition, there, there is like a repeated imagery or, or a, a cadence. I think some of that that I gravitated toward is that rhythm that I, in, in the dance or in the drum, you know, that, that I'm really, it has a part of my life always is that, that drum beat, you know, the heartbeat. Every day, my mission is to put four shapes on each, each platform. So I sort of keep the cadence of, I guess you'd call it a sacred number, but it's just a, a method of working that, that ties back into where you are on the planet. You know, the, the extreme sun, rise, sunset, you know, the solstice markers. It's about a, a person's expression. I'm not really like a slave to the market, as I said, or the media, to be used like a tool, you know, to talk about, you know, land rights only. You have to put the work out there to have a full description of yourself and be, your, be a human being, be a personality, you know, be a, have sensuality, have, you know, sorrow, happiness. It's the, you know, the range of emotions and sentiments. And, Whereas in the past, natives haven't been allowed to do that. And I'm still waiting for that. Mm -hmm.